For those who don't know what I'm doing, this is our chicken coop. It has a coop and a run. Both of them have roofs. And when it rains, rain will hit that roof and run straight off onto the ground. But I'm gonna put gutters up, which will collect the rain, put it into pipes, which will collect it down into two barrels of rain in there. So down here you can see there's pipes on the bottom of those. Up here. You can't fill a barrel from the bottom. Do you even physics, bro? Hello and welcome back. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is apologize for the break in my video schedule. Um, I had exams, tons of homework. And just in general, this has been a really difficult semester. I mean, I've even run into what I think is the most engineering student problem ever. And no, it's not sleep deprivation. Well, I have a little bit of sleep deprivation, but I'm, I'm okay on it. Uh, my problem is that I'm doing statics problems in my dreams. If you don't know, a statics problem is basically um, you have this structure here. It's a bunch of like struts attached together. And um, you put forces here, here, and here, I guess, and then you find out what all the forces on the individual members are, and it also works for machines and pulleys and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I was doing those in my sleep, and I kept snoozing my alarm and not waking up in the morning because I had the static problem I had to keep finishing. Oh boy, I, I need to take a break from my classes. But anyway, back to the video. So this guy, Matt, I mean, you've probably heard of him. Uh, he has a few more subscribers than me um, and multiple channels, uh, but anyway, he decided to build a chicken coop, and instead of refilling their water manually, he decided to collect rainwater, and it fills it up basically automatically. But then he decided to show his design to his audience. Basically, I made this awesome rainwater collection system, and you guys destroyed it in the comments, like, really bad. If you go look, like, 50% of the comments are telling me that it was really dumb of me to think this would work. Like, go look, I'm not playing. Like. I was destroyed in those comments. Like, Matt's gonna be so sad when he looks and realizes this doesn't work. There were people who were explaining physics to me to prove why the system would not work. That pipe comes in right there, goes up right there, hits this, goes here, straight up into the first barrel, and then over into the second barrel. That's how the rain gets in these things. That was a big point of conflict for a lot of people saying, you can't fill a barrel from the bottom to the top without a pump. Okay, I hear you, I hear you. I disagree, but I hear you. So yeah, it's probably safe to say people weren't really uh, confident in Matt's engineering ability. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna show you one more clip uh, just to show another complaint that some people had. And then I'll go ahead and tell you what I think of this system. They think it's silly. They think I'll get a few inches and that's it. Because what they're saying is those two barrels are 50 gallon barrels. Uh, a gallon of water weighs like eight pounds. so. Each barrel weighs 400 pounds. So they're saying with two barrels, there's 800 pounds of pressure if those barrels are all the way full. And there's no way we could get 800 pounds of pressure in these skinny pipes. A lot of people are saying, Matt, use bigger pipes. You can get more water in there if you use bigger pipes. All right, so hopefully you sort of get an idea of what's going on here. And now what do I think? I think this is 100% going to work. So, I'm gonna work backwards here. Let's start with that 800 pounds of pressure comment. That's not how it works. See, that's the thing. So, this commenter, or these commenters, I'm not sure, um, but basically, they're assuming that the pressure of the water is based on the weight of the water, which seems reasonable, weight, pressure, um, but it doesn't make sense once you start to think of the wider implications of that sort of system. It implies that a small pipe, let's say, has a foot of water in it, will have a little pressure at the bottom. But if you have a barrel with a foot of water, you'll have more pressure on the bottom. But then if you take it to the extreme conclusion, which is an excellent tool for deciding whether or not something makes sense, as you can see in one of my previous videos. But anyway, the extreme example of this is the ocean. What if you put your hand one foot deep in the ocean? Well, I actually did the math. And um, based on what these commenters think, the entire way the ocean should push down your hand. So I calculated how much that'd be. And it turns out it's 380 quadrillion pounds of pressure. 
does it feel like you're being compressed into a black hole every time you go swimming in the ocean? Because I hope it doesn't. Also, I know from experience that these barrels can only hold about 70 pounds of pressure. So the idea that they have 400 pounds of pressure at the bottom is just ridiculous. But anyway, so now it should make sense to you that the raw weight of the water is not the sole determining factor of the pressure at the bottom of the barrel or tube or whatever it's in. So the mistake that these commenters are making is that they forgot that pressure is force over area. That 400 pounds figure they're using, that is the force of the water on the ground. That's the barrel pushing on the ground, the whole barrel. But it's over the entire base. Barrels like this have a diameter of about 22 inches, meaning that the area of the bottom is actually 380 square inches, meaning that if each barrel has 400 pounds of force, you put that over the 380 square inches, and that's actually only 1.1 PSI. That's pretty much nothing as far as pressure goes. Those PVC pipes he's using, those are rated for 480 PSI. That literally means he would need a tank 480 times taller to have any pressure problem. Yeah, the people who are commenting this, um, they say they've taken physics, but even the most basic physics class should teach you this equation. Pressure is equal to the density of the material times the acceleration of gravity times the height. So I'm going to go ahead and double check my numbers here using this equation. The density of water is about 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. The acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the depth of the tank is probably about 33 inches or in units that NASA actually used to get us to the moon despite what your memes say, 0.84 meters. So let's run those through a calculator and we get 8,240.4 pascals or 1.2 PSI. Do you even physics, bro? <clears throat> okay, so now I hope we've thoroughly established that the pressure is not going to be any problem in the system. It's just, it's too small for it to really be significant at all. Let's talk about the actual big problem that a lot of people had with the system and that is filling a barrel from the bottom. Again, this is something where people's intuition is messing them up. I mean, it seems wrong for water to flow up a pipe without something pushing it, so they just assume it wouldn't happen. Turns out the truth is something really is pushing it, but we'll get to that later. Now let's look at this diagram I made. It roughly shows you what his chicken watering system is doing. If we go ahead and assume these people are right, and we say the water can't go in the barrels, then where would it go? The only place it could go is back up and out of the gutter, but that really just doesn't make sense when you think about it. What does make sense would be the water level being equal in the tank and in the pipe. Matt actually mentioned this in his video. Water equilibrates, and you can think of it like a watering can, how they have a big can, and then from the bottom, there's a spout coming out. And the water in the spout is always the same level as the water in the can. Just like here. So let's say my barrels are halfway full, which would be about right here. That means the water will also be that full in this pipe. And should it rain, water will come down here and now there'll be higher water in the pipe. So that water will go down to balance out and raise communicating vessels. That's what you need to know here. They're always the same level. If there's a vessel that is communicating to another vessel, they will hold the same level of water. But if for some reason you still aren't sure that the levels would be equal, go ahead and look up communicating vessels on YouTube. You'll see examples like this one, and you can clearly see that the level of the water is equal regardless of how big around the container is. But now, let's talk about why this principle works. It all comes back to the pressure. If you recall, the pressure was just the density times the gravitational acceleration times height. In the case of a water system, the density is always going to be the same. It's going to be 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And gravity is also going to be the same. So the only thing that matters in this entire equation is the height of the water. This means that even though the pipes have a smaller diameter than the barrel, the pressure is the same because it only depends on height. This means that even the small pipes can sort of act like a mini water tower. They start higher, meaning they have more pressure in them, and it's this pressure that is pushing the water down the pipe and up in the barrel on the other side. So he doesn't need a pump because the pump is actually the pressure of the water. He says this in his video, this is powered by gravity and that's 100% what's going on here. 
the water will always continue to flow into the barrel until the pressures are the same, and the pressure only depends on the height. And at the end of the day, most of this arguing is just pointless, because Matt just puts a garden hose on his roof and proves that the tanks fill up with water. Um, I guess, I guess you can't argue with experimental evidence. Well, anyway, even though Matt was able to instantly prove that he was right, uh, I thought it would be interesting to use this video as a way to teach you about fluid dynamics and water pressure, and show you more of the physics behind what's actually going on in a system, other than the fact that it works. But anyway, for now, I'm Conhathy, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you when I don't have homework, exams, uh, projects, meetings, mental breakdowns, having to sleep. Oh god, ow, like hurt my neck.